Hey guys, Footy Manager TV here. Welcome to episode number 12 of my Leeds United FIFA 16 career mode series. Great news here as we have got Kovalenko back from his injury. He's available to play some games, but obviously he's still not 100% fit. So I'll keep that in mind. I probably won't start him, in fact, until he is 100% fit because uh, I don't want to risk re-injuring him. Uh, definitely not. I missed him. Even though results haven't really showcased that, we've still been doing fairly well. Uh, next up, though, Mirko Antonucci is running out of his contract. And I just want to ask you guys, do you think I should offer him a new contract? Because he is 30 years old now, and if we do get promoted into the Premier League, I'm not sure if he's a Premier League level striker. Uh, sure, he's decent rated, but he's only be going hes only going to be going down in his ability um, at the age he is. So that's something to question. And I did show you the other strikers we had in the team. So I will also be going for a pre-contract signing that is a striker. You're going to have to wait to see to the end of the episode, uh, but really make your judgment on him, on Antonucci, uh, once you see the player I'm going to be bringing in, if you think he's worth giving a new contract to. But more so, the biggest question is, will he be good enough to play against Premier League teams? And like Dukara as well, I probably will end up selling. His contract's not running out, so he can probably yeah sell him next season. That's if we do get promoted. I don't want to focus on too much. I'll be disappointed if it doesn't happen. We've got to focus still on winning games. As you can see here, Birmingham, they're on. Terrell finds Aremo, and he misses the first opportunity, but it came off the post, and then he was left with that easy, like one of the easiest goals he's ever going to score in his career uh, right there. Terrell did really well, uh, very composed there to find his man, and a bit disappointing. Uh, because our goalkeeper has been excellent this season. And also, look again here. Silvestri, he's really mad. He's really mad at our defense for letting them have another opportunity. It could have been 2-0. Birmingham, they're sixth this season, so they're pretty good. But we're pretty good as well. With Dongu Safak, that should have really been a goal. It was a great shot. And it did end up being a goal until uh, the assistant flagged for offside for Lewis Cook, which was a bit disappointing because he wasn't the player I was in control of when he was offside anyway. A bit disappointing that the CPU couldn't at least make him in an onside position. But again, I won't complain about that. But it's late in the game now, and we're still looking for one. And Dongu Safak shoots, son! Oh my god, took so long. That occasion there, I felt I had too much time. That was the negative there. I was like, how much space am I in? Can I go closer uh, to make sure of it? And I couldn't do so, unfortunately. Wasn't able to score. And that was an amazing opportunity. That should have been finished, uh, but maybe lacked a bit of composure on that occasion. And there, yeah, I'm talking about myself. Like, I was in so much space, I couldn't believe it. I didn't know when to take the strike. It's happened a few times. Uh, but yeah, Dongu Safak, he's been in a couple great positions so far in this game. And he just couldn't score. So, yeah, that was a bit of a disappointing game. Getting a loss at home, not great. But we did have the more chances in this game. Uh, but unfortunately, it, with chances, you've got to be able to finish them. You can have as many chances as you like. But if you don't take them, uh, yeah, you aren't going to be winning games. Good news is, is we're still 10 points clear at the top, uh, which is uh, very, very good. Uh, another training session here, which a couple of our players do really, really well. Uh, two A's and a B, Amaral. A few guys might be wondering uh, why I'm training him so much. It's basically because his stamina. I want his stamina to at least get to 60 because it's really, really low right now. Uh, but our next game here is against MK Dons, and they've actually lost their last three games, and this is at home for us. We're going to simulate this, as you can see. Uh, they've lost the last three. That was always going to be a win for us. And especially, I do want to get through this season a bit more quicker uh, because, obviously, we are in a great position already. And we did get an injury to Botaka. Uh, for six weeks, so we are going to miss him uh, sorely, even though it may not seem like he does a lot, but he has got good dribbling, he's got five-star skills and a bit of pace, he does create a lot of opportunities without getting assists, if that makes sense, he, he helps us, yeah, create chances for the team, so I feel as though, yeah, he will be missed, and I'm glad Kovalenko is back, obviously different positions, but that would be two players missing, uh, two key players, so at least... Uh, yeah, Kovalenko can come back in. But saying that, Lewis Cook and Mawat, uh, Mawat is, they're, they're doing a very good job. So that's also another thing to consider, as you can see. Um, I even uh, left Mawat in, opposed to Lewis Cook, uh, because he scored a bit more goals. But I think, yeah, Lewis Cook, people would say is the technically better player, uh, and got a bit more potential. But uh, the thing with Moat, he is a bit slower uh, in FIFA, which is a bit unfortunate. 
Um, I'm not sure if you guys think his pace is underrated because, yeah, his pace is really, really, really slow. I wouldn't imagine um, he's that slow in real life. But anyway, we've got another games. Uh, games coming thick and fast here. And I definitely want to push on to win this game. Of course, technically, we won our last game because the simulate. Uh, but the game I actually played against Birmingham, which was a big game for them. As you saw, they were in sixth position uh, before the game was played and they won it. Uh, not just in the playoffs, maybe they want to reach an uh, automatic uh, promotion place as well. But here again at home, uh, we're going to be going to this game uh, against Bolton and Dukara in all the space in the world. And look at all these players. We have like four options there. And Lewis Cook, like I actually mentioned earlier, yeah, he, he comes up uh, with a goal. So knowing that Kovalenko is back, he definitely wants to fight for his position. So he got forward there, uh, put himself available and yeah, available for that shot and uh, that opportunity and was able to finish, was always going to score. And I really do like Lewis Cook. I just want him to continue to develop a lot more. And you don't know what's going to happen in the future um, in our formations as they strike back immediately. Very disappointing to concede that goal, uh, most definitely. But yeah, with Lewis Cook, then we've got Kovalenko, then we've got Moats as well. Who knows, in the future, I may play a 4-3-3, like a formation with three center mids. So they could all play together at some point. So I don't want to completely dismiss that as they'll never play uh, part of the same team, um, starting 11 anyway. So that could potentially happen at some point if I do end up changing formations. Uh, but that was a good goal, I guess, by Darwin Lopez. About 20 minutes remaining in this game. We're going to be looking uh, for a winning goal, but unfortunately, again, a uh, ball given away. Very disappointing. And they're going to be on uh, for a counter here. You see, spearing through the middle, uh, plays it through to Lopez. Defending, uh, we kind of uh, smashed into each other there. That wasn't very good at all. Then it's Darwin Lopez once again. He scores his brace to make it 2-1. And, well, he's telling me to shush. <laughs> what can I say? What can I say? Uh, he put them in the lead. I guess he's entitled to do that away from home as well. Yeah, straight to the camera celebrating. He's obviously a bit excited. Uh, but that was, yeah, it was a good finish. Near post, again, near post in FIFA. Uh, I won't talk about it, but the goals he scored today was the first goals of the season for him. And it looks like we are. We are going to lose once again. The last two games I've actually played. Sure, we got the win in the simulated game. Uh, maybe I wouldn't have, well, no, it was MK Dons at home, I probably would have won, but against some better teams, you could say, uh, yeah, I wasn't able to get any points at all, we end up losing them, so luckily we do have Shrewsbury next, hopefully I'll be able to get the victory there, but we'll move on to some youth players, we've got to now look at that Eric Williams, uh, good minimum potential, 74, max of 94, of course, uh, this guy isn't as good, he's got a long name as well, but here we've got Labino Poscalero, he's got a very big name as well, but he's got some decent potential, so we'll sign him up, then also Robert Lustica, we get three players with 94 maximum potential, and the minimums at least 70, so that's really good, so now I'll show you a review of the youth squad we have as a whole, Poscalero just signed up, only 15, Eric Williams, minimum potential of 80, I'm really excited about him as a left back, Corey Sarota could be really good, Lustica, how about him, minimum potential of 83, centre mid, uh, Stefan Petrato, no, Petrados, uh, but look at Daniel Amaral as well, uh, Portuguese, uh, you know, as the scout of future star, he's going to be an absolute beast, uh, but again, uh, we have got an offer for Marco Silvestri, and I'm really interested to see like, what offer would be accepted? I know I put 8 million there, but, yeah, I'm not really sure because that's why I don't like. Obviously, you can't be expecting to get huge money for these lower players, but 2 million, I don't feel that's... I don't think... Like, he deserves... Like, or if we were going to sell him, he deserve more money than that, like, on his output and what he's done for us. But as I mentioned earlier, I was going to go for a pre-contract signing and Charlie Austin. We haven't even got a full scout report on him yet because in the last episode you guys suggested him and then I went on to scout him in the game I'm surprised I was yeah scouting England for players that are running out their contract and he didn't show up so I just thought he would at some point uh, but either way we'll give him what he wants uh, 50k big money but he is a big striker to be fair he should be playing Premier League football so hopefully we'll be able to get that for him uh, yeah 50k no doubt he'll be a crucial first team player he'll come in as our best striker easily really he's like in the high 70s over like I think 77 or something like that so and um, yeah one of our players we had Buckley on loan yeah he's going back as you knew at the start of uh, this series and then we got three offers 
he's a wanted man, Silvestri, because he's performing really, really well. I'm not sure about you guys, but I get this fairly often. It happened to my... Well, it happened. Like, it did happen in my career modes in FIFA 15. Like I'm saying, it happened to me like it was a bad thing. It's not really a bad thing. I just notice, yeah, when your goalkeepers do really well, a lot of offers come in for them. And it's often that my goalkeepers actually do well uh, because... If I'm winning games, keeping clean sheets, uh, they get good ratings. So Charlie Austin, uh, the final scout report comes in there and he does look pretty good. 77 overall, like I mentioned. So yeah, uh, what do you think about signing him? Uh, definitely Premier League quality. So I'm excited to use him next season. Hopefully we do actually end up being in the Premier League and another offer is going to come in for Silvestri. So leave your thoughts what I should do with him. Should I accept offers for how much as well? Drop in the comments. Drop a like if you'd like to see more of this series as well. And I'll see you guys in the very next episode.